All right, there she is. That's the, uh, what payloader is that, Chris? The Volvo L120H. L120H, what size is that? Basically, this is about a four and a half yard loader, right in that area. What we wanna do today, Chris, is get people familiar with what to do and especially what not to do when they're first running a payloader. Now I've owned and operated payloaders, and Chris, you've got 26 years experience, don't you? Yeah, I've got, I got quite a few I've, since I was young, real I, young. I watched him when I was filming other videos. This dude is like a guru of payloaders. So, um, my wife, hi. Doesn't hi. she look excited, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a sense that she's lying to us. Basically, what we're gonna try, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna go over to the stone pile. We're gonna try to fill the bucket um, as efficiently um, and full as possible. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want a bunch of stone spilling over the back, but in the same token, we want it fairly full because. The, the main part of being productive with this machine is getting as much material into the truck or wherever it's going into to its destination. Okay. Um, so some things you wanna look at, you wanna make sure we're always going into the pile flat. So we have the cutting edge flat on the ground. Um, if it's tipped too far forward, then we're gouging into the ground. And basically if you have processed material, the customer basically wants that material. They don't want anything else, um, contamination, anything like that. So I'm gonna show you how to use your bucket level. Uh, most machines have either a mechanical bucket level or an electronic. Um, some, if you see some that don't, you want to pick a reference on the bucket somewhere. So in our case with these machines, this part of the bucket, if this is flat, this flat part here, mm -hmm. that's parallel to your cutting edge. So you can kind of look from the cab and see that if this part looks flat, then pretty much your, the bottom is flat too, so you won't be gouging into the ground. The guys coming in, even if your machine has uh, electronic bucket level, it's not a bad idea to try to figure out a mechanical cheat system as well because sometimes it just is easier. Whatever right. whatever is right. easier for the op each individual operator. Absolutely. I mean, some, there's guys that like to run just by feel, so that bet a visual cue is very important. If you, if you want kind of a, like a reference point, if we had to set the bucket, we always want the cutting edge completely flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. And then we look to the back of the bucket here. There's wear pads. You want to have those wear pads about, you know, two inches above the ground. That's, okay, but you really would perfect. never see that from the cap. No, you won't see this. This is something, I mean, if you're really conscious about, you know, keeping your material from getting contaminated, then this is something I recommend you do every once in a while. I mean, these settings, whether it's mechanical or electronic, they stay, like the machine will remember that the electronic for sure until someone actually goes in there and physically messes with the button or pushes it again. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as the, the mechanical, it's, you know, you tighten it down good. You just, it's really nothing you have to worry about. So you want to get up to your mound or whatever you're digging and then set it once you get up yep. there. So as you, as you approach the pile, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll set your bucket down on the deck. You'll go in, you'll go in and start going into the pile. Um, you always want to kick the machine down to first gear. Um, most loaders have an automatic feature that'll do it automatically and as well as a manual. Um, so it really depends on an operator's preference, what they want to use. So most operators, when they get when they get to you know a higher a high skill level, they'll do it manually because they know exactly when by feel and the sound of the machine exactly when they want that power if delivered um, to push the machine forward. I would say the next thing, the next most common um, thing I see is a lot of people when they put the bucket down on the ground, they push, they just push, they push down, and then you start rocking the machine up. You lose the wheel, you lose your front wheel contact on the ground, then you start spinning tires. Um, once you start spinning tires, basically your momentum going into the pile and, and your ability to crowd the bucket of material is lost at that point. Um, in addition to that, when you back up, you're going to hit this big giant pothole that you create and you shake everything all over. Um, and then, you know, you have to drive through that the next time in and it, it throws everything off. So we really want to make sure that as soon as we make contact with the toe of the pile, with the bucket, we do an initial lift. Um, that lift is generally like, I don't know, five to ten inches high. And what that does is what we call set the tires. So that'll actually get good pressure down on your tires. Basically your front tires and your real tires, are that's what's pushing you into that pile. So the more pressure and contact we have on the ground with those, um, the easier it is and more efficiently um, we're able to fill the bucket at that point. Where the hell were you yesterday, Chris? I was explaining this with the skid loader and you just did it way better than I did it. That's for sure. This was exactly what we were talking about when we were talking about grabbing a load yesterday. So awesome explanation. Thank you. So 
let's do a quick walk around on the machine and get familiar with the different components of it. Because okay. I'm going to guess that everything you say to her is going to be brand new. And so a lot of the guys and gals watching, this may be brand new to them as well. So let's explain what it is. Let's just talk about this machine real briefly so guys know exactly what they're getting into. Okay, well, well like I mentioned, we have our bucket. This is the, the component we use to fill and move the material. Mm -hmm. um, next we have our lift arms and we call this our, our loader linkage. So basically we have the lift arm system with our hydraulic cylinders that lift the, the, whole, the, the whole frame. And then we call this our, our, our loader and bucket linkage. So this is the, the, the portion that tilts the bucket. So we have a, a hydraulic cylinder connected to that as well that will actually tilt and, and curl the bucket back. These are universal systems, but if these guys aren't running a Volvo loader, they may not find them in the same spot. Right, so the, people know. the linkages can vary. The lift arm is fairly standard. I mean, there's some, yep. if you go back years and years ago, we used to have, they used to have like mono booms, like a single boom that, that, that a couple different manufacturers use, but, but more, more or less now in this day and age, everyone's using like a two arm design. And then, you know, depending on the, the manufacturer, um, they use really two different styles of linkage, a parallel style linkage like we have now. And then uh, we also have what we call a Z bar linkage. Next, as we walk back, you can see we have the, the loader articulated in the center so we have basically um, two different portions of a frame we have a front frame um, and the connection between these two frames is, are made by two two pins this is what we call our articulation point um, so we have um, pins here and pins and bushings up here along with our steer cylinders uh, which actually turn the machine so they'll turn the front of the machine we have the rear frame so the rear frame houses the engine um, the, 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 the bulk of the drive line um, to, to, to power to power the machine and, and, and move you forward but you can see the cab is positioned in, in, towards the rear of that so you have really good visibility uh, over what's going on uh, so if you we, we literally can cut this machine right in half if you look straight down here you can see that the cab is on the back side of it right there is the framework this is all the front portion of the machine um, and then you just marry these two components together during the manufacturing process and hook them up yep one thing that this this will behave a little bit differently than a car so or, or like a truck with a trailer you think it has two pieces like you think you're towing something but actually these wheels will track in the same line so when you turn the back wheels will follow the front wheel so it's gonna it's gonna turn a little bit sharper than an automobile um, and also the steering characteristics are a little bit different and, and we'll, we'll show you that once you get in there. Is there anything on the other side of the, uh, the unit we should look at? Yeah, yeah, why don't we take a walk over there. Okay. So on this side of the machine we have our, our batteries. Also we'll have um, most machines, just about all machines now have a, a filtration system for you in the cab. So this filter system filters the air you're breathing because I mean as you can imagine these machines get get themselves into some really dirty dusty environments along with our our air filter system for the engine as well all machines are gonna have basic checkpoints you know you have to check hydraulic fluid you have to check your oil your coolant all that and then finally in the rear of the machine we have our counterweight um, and depending on what we're doing and what type of application the machines in we may have more or less counterweight um, so like material handling like rehandling of material Want a lot of counterweight on the machine because we're lifting different densities of material so we want to have that this counterweight basically counters the weight that you're going to apply to the bucket to keep the machine stable while you're operating now there's going to be two basic different kinds of payloaders basically built the same one will be more for mining and harvesting materials in an application like we're at right here and another one would that be for more off-road digging and excavating and and just general purpose and so the counterweights would be different on those two machines like a, a mining machine would have more and a and an off-road machine have um, less or am i wrong with that it, it really depends i mean if you're i mean with a general purpose machine we we tend to like to, to provide the counterweight as well the extra counterweight because we never know what the customer is going to do with it the main counterweights on all our machines are they're at a set weight and then we have what we call our rehandling or logging counterweight that you see that bolts on under the there that's what that's what we'd add for additional counterweight 
um, if the customer had a high density material or, or they were using, you know, using machine for rehandling or anything with that, you know, the upper levels of, of higher density material. All right. So next, do we go into the cab and get familiar with that? Absolutely. Let's All do right. It. Let's do that.